Calculus Explained In calculus, a function is a mathematical object that relates input values, known as the independent variable, to output values, known as the dependent variable. A function can be thought of as a machine that takes in a value, processes it according to a set of rules or operations, and produces a unique output. The basic notation for a function is fx, where x is the input value and fx is the output value. The input value is also called the argument of the function. For example, consider the function fx equals 2x plus 1. This function takes an input value x, multiplies it by 2, and then adds 1 to the result. So, if we plug in x equals 3, we get f3 equals 2 3 plus 1 equals 7. Thus, the output value of the function when x equals 3 is 7. Functions are used in calculus to model real-world phenomena, such as the movement of an object, the growth of a population, or the change in temperature over time. They are also used to represent mathematical concepts, such as trigonometric functions, exponential functions, and logarithmic functions. Give me an example of with variance of slope speed deceleration where the slope is 30 degrees down to fourth quadrant. Quadrilatics? Sure, here is an example that involves slope, speed, and acceleration, and a quadratic function. Consider an object moving along a curved path given by the quadratic function fx equals x squared plus 4x plus 1, where x represents time in seconds and fx represents the height of the object above ground in meters. The slope of the curve at any point x is given by the derivative of the function fx, which is fx equals 2x plus 4. At x equals 1, the slope of the curve is f1 equals minus 2 1 plus 4 equals 2. This means that at x equals 1, the object is moving upward at a speed of 2 meters per second. The speed of the object at any time x is given by the absolute value of the derivative of fx, which is vertical bar fx equals vertical bar 2x plus 4 vertical bar. At x equals 2, the speed of the object is Vertical bar F2 equals vertical bar 2 2 plus 4 vertical bar equals 0. This means that at x equals 2, the object is momentarily at rest. The acceleration of the object is given by the second derivative of fx, which is fx equals minus 2. This means that the acceleration of the object is a constant minus 2 meters per second squared, indicating that it is moving in the negative direction with a constant acceleration. The slope of the curve is 30 degrees down to the fourth quadrant when tangent 30 equals 1 slash sqrt 3. Thus, the slope of the curve is 1 slash sqrt 3 when fx equals 1 slash sqrt 3, or when 2x plus 4 equals 1 slash sqrt 3. Solving for x, we get x equals 4 plus 1 slash sqrt 3, 2. Finally, substituting this value of x into the quadratic function fx, we get the height of the object at this point on the curve. I hope this example helps illustrate the use of slope, speed, acceleration, and quadratic functions in calculus. OK explain that like you are teaching it to me for the first time. Sure. Let's break down the example step by step. We have an object that is moving along a curved path, and the path is given by a mathematical function called a quadratic function. This function takes an input value, which we will call x, and produces an output value, which we will call fx. The function looks like this fx equals x squared plus 4x plus 1. The function tells us how high the object is above the ground at any given time. The variable x represents time in seconds, and the variable fx represents the height of the object in meters. 
Now, the slope of the curve at any point x tells us how steep the curve is at that point. We calculate the slope by taking the derivative of the function with respect to x. The derivative of the function is another function that tells us how fast the original function is changing at any point x. We write the derivative of the function as fx. The slope of the curve at x equals 1 is given by the value of f1. We calculate this by plugging in x equals 1 into the derivative of the function. fx equals 2x plus 4 f1 equals minus 2 1 plus 4 equals 2. So, the slope of the curve at x equals 1 is 2. This means that the object is moving upward at a speed of 2 meters per second at this point. Next, we look at the speed of the object at a specific time, x equals 2. The speed of the object is given by the absolute value of the derivative of the function. We write this as vertical bar fx vertical bar. So, the speed of the object at x equals 2 is vertical bar fx equals vertical bar 2x plus 4 vertical bar vertical bar f2 equals vertical bar 2 2 plus 4 vertical bar equals 0. This means that the object is momentarily at rest at x equals 2. In other words, it is not moving at all. Finally, we look at the acceleration of the object. Acceleration tells us how quickly the speed of the object is changing over time. We calculate the acceleration by taking the second derivative of the function. We write the second derivative of the function as fx. The acceleration of the object is a constant minus 2 meters per second squared, because the second derivative of the function is a constant minus 2. fx equals minus 2. This tells us that the object is moving in the negative direction, downward, with a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Lastly, we are asked to find the point on the curve where the slope of the curve is 30 degrees down to the fourth quadrant. We can use trigonometry to solve for the value of x that satisfies this condition. We know that the tangent of a 30 degree angle is equal to 1 slash sqrt3, so we set the derivative of the function equal to this value. Tangent 30 equals 1 slash sqrt3 2x plus 4 equals 1 slash sqrt3. Solving for x, we get x equals 4 plus 1 slash sqrt3 2. Finally, we can substitute this value of x back into the quadratic function to find the height of the object at this point on the curve. What tips can you give me to remember all that? Remembering all of the steps involved in solving a calculus problem can be challenging, but there are some tips and strategies that you can use to help you remember. Practice, practice, practice. The more practice problems you work through, the more familiar you will become with the steps involved in solving calculus problems. This will help you to remember the process more easily. Break down the problem into smaller steps, instead of trying to tackle the entire problem at once, break it down into smaller steps. This can help you to focus on one step at a time and make the problem more manageable. Use flashcards, create flashcards with important formulas and concepts. Review them regularly to help reinforce your knowledge. Draw diagrams, drawing diagrams can help you to visualize the problem and understand the relationships between the variables involved. Create a cheat sheet, create a cheat sheet with important formulas and concepts that you can refer to while working on problems. Work with a study group, studying with others can help you to stay motivated and focused. Discussing problems with others can also help you to gain a better understanding of the material. Get enough sleep and exercise, getting enough rest and exercise can help to improve your cognitive function and memory, making it easier to remember what you have learned. Remember, learning calculus takes time and practice. Don't get discouraged if it takes a while to fully understand the material. Keep working at it and use these tips to help you along the way. Like, comment, subscribe, to follow along for the trip.